if you tell them you're impressed, then they own the pride and it's actually encourages them to do more things successfully. You're building the muscle of believing you can do it and success and recognition because inside of yourself, you have to tell yourself you've done a good job. Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Reaching Your Goals. Reaching Your Goals is hopefully your favorite career podcast where you get the insights to go from motion into action and make things happen. I'm your host, Johanna Herbst. I am a certified executive and career coach and a management consultant with an MBA from NYU Stone School of Business. My mission is to inspire you to reach your goals, lead with kindness and have some fun along the way. As I say, my mission consists of three pillars and today we will focus on leading with kindness and have an amazing guest for that is Joan Hornig. We will find out about the business model for her philanthropically driven companies. We will brainstorm on how you can be kind every day without spending a penny on that. I think also in Joan's story, you will also see how helping each other without expecting anything in return can open doors. So let me quickly introduce Joan Hornick to you. Joan began her career as a professional fundraiser for Harvard University and Columbia Business School before spending 19 years on Wall Street. Since 2003, Joan has combined her love of jewelry and design business skills and experience with non-profit organizations as founder and CEO of her philanthropically driven companies, Joan Hornig Jewelry, Philanthropy is Beautiful and Pave the Way or Pave the Way. Both Joan's designs and social enterprise business model have been honored by non-profit educational institutions and the media. She allows customers to designate any charity of their choice to receive 100% of her profit on each piece sold. By now, Joan's donations have raised millions of dollars and are spread among more than 1,000 nonprofits worldwide. Joan's designs have been shown by the National Jewelry Institute in New York and Paris. Her jewelry designs are worn by numerous stars, business leaders, and government officials, including first ladies. Laura Bush and Michelle Obama, former Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton, Oprah, Lady Gaga, and Jennifer Lopez. Joan and her husband, George, live in New York City and also spend time in Los Angeles. With that, Joan Hornick on Reaching Your Goals. Joan, it's great to see you again. How are you doing this morning? Oh, I'm doing great today. I get to talk to you and we get to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is being kind and sharing that. Perfect. And to get things started, I prepared a few rapid fire questions. Yes. Short questions, short answers. Are you ready? I hope so. You are a jewelry maker. What jewelry do you wear every single day? Every single day, I wear the folding chair necklace, which you can see here. Ah. Is, if there isn't a seat for you at the table, bring a folding chair, honorary Shirley Chisholm. Always wear my wedding band. I've married 48 years this year, and it's very important to me. And I don't think I'm dressed unless I have jewelry on. Wow. Congratulations to the 48 years. That's amazing. There are so many celebrities already wearing your jewelry. Is there one celebrity in particular that you would like to wear it as well? A celebrity I'd like to wear it as well. It's Taylor Swift. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, because Taylor Swift has such a big audience and is doing so much in so many cities on this tour. She's amazing. And I read about you that in 2012, the New York Stock Exchange invited you to ring the closing bell. How difficult is that to do? To ring the bell is not difficult. One does feel the pressure of getting it exactly on the time. They tell you when the clock goes off, you know, if you ring the bell. But it was just such, it was such an honor. And one of the best parts of it was that I could bring other people to stand on oh, wow. the platform with me. And that was what meant so much. And it wasn't just me, because what I do isn't about me. It's about the community and the team. So I loved that. And you became a business owner in 2003. 
What is the most fun, fun thing about being your own boss? The most fun thing about being my own boss is that I can work when it's convenient for me. But it, on the other side of it, when you're your own boss and it's your company, you work all the time. It's fun to be your own boss and own a company. It's more fun for me now than when I had to use my name as a company because I want the message of the company that philanthropy is beautiful and pave or pave the way to be the most important messages that get out there, not Joan Hornick. It's about institutionalizing the thoughtfulness of people. Who is one of your role models? Oprah's one of my role models. And she's my role model because she took her platform and turned it to not only highlight people in need historically, but also to actually go in and help them. And so that's, that is an identification and an action. What do you need to be at your best? Sleep, to be at <laughs> best, which is something most people don't get enough of. That's, that would be my immediate off the, you know, off the cuff answer. But to be at my best, what I really need is a team of people who are strong and care. And I'm so happy that's what I have in, on our team. How many hours do you typically sleep? Between six and eight. Okay. So on the lower end. The lower <laughs> end. How would your family and friends describe you in one word? Friendliest person on the planet. I love it. What is the most important quality of our leader? Listening. Listening is, I think, the most important, not dictating listening, which is part of, the, um, part of the underpinning of my company. By asking, we're forced to listen, and then we're engaging. What is the best advice you've been offered either in your personal or in your professional life? My personal life, I was offered that advice by my husband, who's my number one cheerleader. And he said to me, if you want to do something Don't be afraid of the risk of disappointment. You can handle it. Try it. Professionally, the best advice I got was early on from my mentor when I was on Wall Street, which is don't escalate everything so quickly. Some problems will just go away. They will resolve themselves. So I felt that it was important to share with your audience those two things. Perfect. And one last question for the rapid fire. What is one thing that people often get wrong about you? Hmm. What do they get wrong about me? I think they get wrong about me that I'm not sensitive. And I am sensitive, but since I come off as so confident, they don't know that I'm sensitive as well. Because I know how to I know how to slough it off. Thank you for sharing. And with that, I would love to learn more about you and how you became this philanthropical powerhouse. Would you mind sharing the key milestones that led you to where you are today? Key milestones. Mm -hmm. The first is I would always start with having supportive parents, particularly a mother who is supportive, who told me that if you think you can, you can, that you can go for it and you can go out there and do it. Second milestone was my husband getting married and getting married, my education, where all of a sudden I saw the world was going to open up when I married my husband and we were undergraduates at Harvard. And I thought, this is a real privilege to have this education and I better use it. The next milestone, because I'm going to take you over, I'm going to go by decade. <laughs> <laughs> Then the next milestone was having children and knowing that you have to be the best you can be. Following that... 9-11 was a milestone because I woke up to the fact that really it wasn't about having the best. It was about being the best, which takes me back to how I was raised, that everyone has something to give. Very minimum, it should be respect for other people and not to prejudge. After that, I think that the next milestone was getting into Bergdorf Goodman, which had the Philanthropy is Beautiful line for 17 years, and that credentialed me. And after that, it was really starting the Pave the Way or Pave the Way line with the opportunity to broaden the base of people who could participate and to make it even clearer to have conversations of consequence and to unlock a younger demographic. Wow. That is so impressive. 
I have a few questions. Like you changed from Wall Street to yeah, like finding your creative way. Like that's a big, big change. What was it like for you to really swap areas? I never cried in the office when I worked on Wall Street. I cried the first week I was at Bergdorf's. <laughs> and, oh, wow. And that was shocking to me. When I was on Wall Street, what I was selling was somebody else's product, essentially. I was selling asset management or I was selling, you know, an intangible. When my, when every piece of my jewelry had been designed by me and people would walk by or say, oh, I don't like that or it's not worth it. When I was standing in the store, I cried. I mean, not in front of them, but I actually cried because I had never done anything that was so personal that I had to own the same way. I'm getting goosebumps. I find it so amazing. Like, background is also in finance, so I can really see how finance is a great foundation. And you moved into this very creative endeavor. It's like really making the jewelry. How did you know that you actually have a product that people want to buy? That is a fantastic question. I would wear the jewelry and I would that I made, and I got so many notices and so many comments that I people started to say, where did you get that? That's so unusual. That's so good. And I wore every piece and still wear every piece out for a day or two in public before I put it into a store or before I put it on the website. Because if it doesn't get noticed, it's not doing its job. Because I want conversations of consequence. And that comes from someone saying, I like a piece of your jewelry, which is a safe thing to talk about. And the person on the other end saying, thank you. Do you know it's supported X, Y, and Z? Yes. We've made an empowering fashion. And if someone doesn't notice the jewelry I'm wearing, it's not good enough. And one of the wonderful things about jewelry is that since I'm using real materials, all I'm losing is time and some labor in what might be stringing or soldering or casting, but the things can be reused and reworked. So it's a very, it's a very efficient way to change and be, and be agile. And one more question on this change, since it's a Kirvia podcast. Did you first start this as a side hustle or when did you go fully in? I never started it with any intention of being a business. So I did it simultaneously while I was doing um, private equity. And it happened because of the power of a woman who is a friend of my younger child and, you know, the mother of a friend of my younger child. And when she saw the jewelry, she asked me about it, and she actually opened up the door to someone she'd been in a mommy and me playgroup with and called the divisional manager at Bergdorf Goodman. And I will always be grateful to that transition. The first three and four years that I had the jewelry company, I simultaneously stayed in private equity and hedge fund world. So I managed to do both things and work from home so I could be with the kids. So it was really a lot, of, it was a lot of juggling, but a lot of people on my side, you know, cheering me on. Wow. And so I think it does, I think it does take a village and a team. And I believe that if we're going back to kindness, I think we have to talk about when you, when you meet someone who's doing something that's kind or thoughtful, a little brave, maybe a little out of lane, support them. Say, tell them they're doing a good job. Tell them you're impressed. And if they need you to show up, show up. I think one of the things that's really important in life is to show up. Show up. And what I'm also hearing is this seeing and hearing other people. I mean, you also said before that listening is one of the most important skills in a leader. I see that already recurring. I hope so. And, and as you said, it's like today we are here to talk about kindness. And what I saw on the website for your business, on the Pave the Way website, actually, it says we donate 100% of profit, meaning the money we make after the cost of production. In most cases, donations directed by customers average to be 20% of the retail price for each piece. Sales to date have generated millions of dollars in donations to over 1,000 nonprofit organizations around the world. Yes. And when I read that, I was like, holy moly, that's amazing. It's really important. I have never taken a penny from the business. I have never charged. Part of why we can offer such good jewelry at such 
effective pricing is because we're not marking it up because I'm not putting the cost of running the business into the business. And so that 100% is might translate to 20%, but it might be wouldn't even be 20% if we put in all the costs, but I cover those in addition, because I believe by listening, I will know what's important to people in the world and we can help them. So just to translate that, that means you're not paying yourself a salary. Never paid myself a salary and I've never put salaries of the people who work for me into the cost. So the way I do the business is it's purely on the metals, the stones, And, and actually, like, that might be the professional stringing and casting. Yes. The artisans, but none of the staff, none of the people who help us find the, the charity addresses, none of the people that go out there and help me, their salaries are not factored in. I donate those as well. The jewelry would be much more expensive if I factored those in, but I wanted to make sure that I was able to give at a minimum 20%. And many times it's more. But sometimes I price things so close that 20% is not. So we go with safety. It is 100% of the profit on each piece, not factoring in all the costs and not bottom line. And now we already learned that we are talking about a couple of millions here. Do you have a vision like how much money you want to donate in total? No, I have no vision about that. But I have a vision about people copying the model. And, and going to the, that extra effort to, to say, it's not my favorite charity I'm asking you to give to. What is, your favorite, what is your favorite cause? And it's a way to help people support more than one thing or to go deep in supporting it. Because I believe the nonprofit world needs to have, needs to have ambassadors and they have to be the regular people and that jewelry is a great way to do that because people see it and they comment on it and women do so much. I'm such a supporter of women's efforts and effectiveness. And I think it's quite clever to let people donate it to the charity of their choice because you make them think about it. And what you said earlier, they have more of a story to talk about. Yes, it was early. No one else had ever done it. That's more important actually than the dollars. I was early in social enterprise and I've never veered from it. And the good news is now it's, it's a whole area and it's part of it. And that's, and this is what I had hoped for. And so now I hope that, um, that Gen Z embraces it the same way because it's all about the future. And you said before that you want that this model is being copied. Has that happened so far? It actually happened a number of years ago in a plastics container person who he sold his business and then started doing that. And people have modified it. People can only do what they can do. Yes. They try and when they see that it's really authentic and real and has never changed, it gives them some sense of comfort because to do this for 23 years and never have taken money and always have asked, it's been very effective because they can go deep and see. And I often talk about purpose, purpose-inspired leadership and what drives us. So I, I assume this is a lot your purpose on really pushing the social enterprises and contributing to more sustainability, building the foundation for the future. Yes. What are the activities here that really charge your batteries? Because you keep going and you're giving. Like When we look at the nonprofits that that people choose, You can't help but be inspired. We find them, and when it's a new one, we always add it to our website, and we always enable our, the people who go to our website to leave the website and go on to the ones that they're selecting. Because I think one of the things we have to do is be able to look at all these amazing people. And, and there are amazing people all over the world who do things that are so important, and they don't make as much money as a Wall Street person. They might work six times as hard, but they care and they give. And it's the nonprofit employees. And most of those are women, by the way. And they, and they do make yes. less money, but they do do so much. And so that's, what, that's the inspiration. I never know what nonprofit's going to hit my radar. And I'm always thrilled when there's a new one. I'm happy when, you know, we get repeats, but 
always thrilled when I can add a new one to the site. And why we list them alphabetically and why they have to be so small on the site is because we have so many. But I get to be the agnostic donor. And mm -hmm. I love that. And so that's why we list them alphabetically. I'm not a charity navigator. I'm not evaluating how effective they are or how much goes into overhead because sometimes when things start, it costs more. I just wanted to ask in that direction if there are any, any charities that are off limits. Yes, there are two kinds of charities that are off limits. One is about intolerance. Fortunately, no one has ever asked me to support something where there is no intolerance. And the other one is anything that promotes guns and very anti-violence and guns. That is a personal obsession of mine to make our environment safe and to be able to use conversations instead of weapons. I mean, no one has asked me to give to anything about guns, but if it happened, I guarantee yes. it wouldn't happen. I would rather send them back the jewelry. Yes, I love that. In terms of your purpose, how would you phrase it? Do you have like a short saying that keeps you going? I expect every day to bring me something new and interesting. I'm, I believe in lifelong learning. And so what I tell myself is I'm going to learn something new today and something good is going to happen. And I'm going to, and I'm just waiting for it. And if it comes early in the day, that's great. Because then I have a smile on, you know, in my heart. But if it comes early in the day, I wait for another one to come later in the day and another one <laughs> because one is not enough. That's one thing. Good things happening, more is better. And I hear that your glass is half full. At least that's the impression I'm getting. Quarters. I wake up, I wake up happy. I go to sleep thoughtful. And I've just, I've been very lucky. I wake, just been like that. I'm an optimist. And you also mentioned before that not everybody has the same means as you do. So not everybody can give like work without pay. Of course. But that will not stop all of us to lead with kindness. Because I think there's no excuse to be the opposite. So I'm not, I don't want to use bad language, but there's no excuse for being nasty with people. No excuse. I agree with you 100%. I think the power of a smile is extraordinary. The power of making eye contact with a smile. I think that one of the things I saw this over and over and over again, when women try on my jewelry and they stand in front of a mirror and they put on the earrings, for example, or a necklace, they might make a mirror face, but often their mirror face is a smile. And so it's sort of nice to see reflected back at them, their own smile and we look at babies and we smile and we love when they smile back. And I just think that we don't do enough of that at other people. Can't be afraid. Yes. We have to smile at them. And that's something everyone can give. That. I wanted to ask to brainstorm a little bit on the little things that everybody can do. So we have like a smile goes a mile. So that check, we can do that. And also like at work, when we see that somebody did a good job on something, we can just say so and applaud somebody on something they did work very hard on. Yes. My oldest daughter said to me, tell someone you're impressed, not that you're proud. If you say you're proud of someone, then what you're saying is you own it. If you tell them they're in, you're impressed, then they own the pride and it's actually encourages them to do more things successfully. You're building the muscle of believing you can do it and success and recognition because inside of yourself, you have to tell yourself you've done a good job and that yes. you stretched and got there. So I think at work, tell someone you're really impressed with what they've done. You appreciate it so that they can own it, not that you own it, even if you're the boss. And I think it's also going back to the being seen and being heard. I mean, I can speak from my experience when somebody's like, oh, Johanna, you really did a good job here. I liked how you presented this. I grow. I'm a little bit taller afterwards. I'm excited about that. I feel recognized. I feel seen. And that is something that is small. So I think that is something to me that would qualify as being kind. And also, there are small things on how we can help each other. My background is also in consulting, so there's like PowerPoint slides is the tool I'm using. So if I see somebody has a spelling mistake or it's like something small, I can share that. And that is helping and that is kindness. So I feel like there's a lot on that side where we can just make the other person look a little bit better and help them to succeed without 
asking anything in return. Always. What I believe is that someone else's time is more valuable to them than my time with them. And so therefore we want them to do the best they can do always. We're all on the same team. Everyone should do the best. And if yes. it means helping them, we have to help them gently. Because I mean, I think this is what you do with your company is you put so much goodness there, but you're not asking for anything in return. No, I'm just hoping. I'm hoping that they're inspired that day to talk about it and to, and to think about it. And if their children want to do something, help their children do something that gives back. There's a lot of need, but one of the needs is to listen. Another need is to give. And the creativity and the opportunity to help children grow so that it becomes a lifestyle of respect yes. for other people. And not judging by what they have, but judging yourself by what you can help them have. And, and that's one more thing. I have to ask one more question about your Wall Street experience because I did two projects within banking. To me, that was the worst experience ever within my uh, project work. Could you be this kind person within the finance industry? Because what I've seen, it was awful. People were not kind. Yes, I was able to be kind. But I think part of it is that I had a mentor who was kind I chose people to be around who were kind. And I think people, if you're kind, people will be kind back. Do I think it's cutthroat? It can be. Do I think that you have to be, sometimes as an investment professional, you might be very good at the modeling or the actual project that you're doing, but that doesn't, and if you're very good at it, sometimes you get promoted to be head of a department and that doesn't mean you're a good manager. So you have to think about being a good manager as well as essentially being a good salesperson or a good professional in terms of what you actually create. And that transition is really when people sometimes get anxious. And when they get anxious, that's when they might not be quite as kind because they feel responsible and they feel uncertain. So I think that every time someone at work is promoted, you have to help them believe that they can do it and they can succeed because the sooner they feel confident, the sooner they might be kinder and have more room for people to learn on the job. So what I'm also hearing now is like the whole role modeling. Like if you role model good behavior, other people might say, oh, you can be successful with that. So why not try that way as well? Yes. I just, I was very lucky. I only a few times people were unkind to me, and generally they weren't unkind to me. I felt they were being unkind to someone else, and then I felt a responsibility to them. And it wasn't empathy. It wasn't empathy. It was that I didn't underst I didn't understand yes. how, why people would behave like that. I never saw a woman behave like that in my years on Wall Street, but I did see a couple men. But there weren't that many women when I was there, so... <laughs> Yes. And you also mentioned before that there is a passion for you for sustainability and preserving the planet. Yes, absolutely. Respect for people and the planet, the work they do. And so from the very beginning, I've been very concerned. My husband was head of Riverkeeper for a number of years. And so we've always cared about the environment. And you, this is something we have in our control. So I've always used sustainable materials, even the packaging. I've always used, I've reused silver. I've reused gold. I made sure everything was ethically sourced, not only the diamonds, but the gold, the stones. Yeah. And I think that we want our great-grandchildren to be able to breathe. And I think that we have to, res I think we have to respect the planet, all parts of it. We have to make sure that there's food and air and land and water and I just think that we don't have a choice that we have to be and this is all part of being optimistic that I believe there will be great grandchildren who will do this and I have great faith I have great faith in Gen Z caring about this and I've watched over these 20 years the growth of people choosing environmentally focused nonprofits for donations and that's also Interesting. And that's also given me a lot of hope because what that tells me is that this is on the radar. And I was surprised by that in the beginning because most people weren't thinking about the environment. They often think about 
health related things or social, you know, social good, education, but the rise in focus on the environment is extraordinary. And so I think this is a good sign. Do you have the numbers behind it? Like what percentage is going to environmentally friendly? I don't really have the number, but I have mm -hmm. the comment that people write. So I would say that 23 years ago, there weren't that many. That percentage wasn't that great. But starting about 15 years ago, it started to go on the uptick. And it started to go on the uptick right at the time when Obama was president here. Yeah. And that was the beginning of even more young people voting and more and young people teach their parents and grandparents in addition to their cohorts and peers. And I would say that I am asked all the time about the sustainability factor and I can show them. So it's I would say that it probably rose to it probably grew exponentially to 25% yes. of, of conversations about it one way or another, even if it's not a choice of a charitable donation. But that really makes hopeful. And I also saw here that there are some more and more startups that are going into the environmental topics because that's also like a big, big business opportunity. Like money can be made from things that really help the environment. Yes, yes. People want to do... If you make it easy for people to do the right thing, they will definitely do it. Yes. And if you make companies responsible, they will be because they want to sell their products. And if you make fashion sustainable, fashion will be sustainable. And uh, there are science is our friend. We can what we can do with mushrooms, what we can do to clean up the environment. It's just extraordinary what can happen in the oceans. You can clean it up. Look at our Hudson River. It's clean now. You can swim in it. Mm. Have you dared? No. I walk past putting on a bathing suit and swimming in swimming in public like that. But but you know, we have when you see what's coming back in the ocean, yes. this is exciting. Can do it. And for our audience who feel inspired now to do something kind, what sh what should they do? Like what is one way to really get going on that side? I think they should say something nice to someone if they're in an elevator. I find elevators a very good place to actually do something kind. People are captive, but there's something very strange about everybody turning their backs and stand, standing, you know, with their backs to someone. So as they enter, they should smile and say good morning or good afternoon, or I hope you're having a good day. I like your earrings. You know, it's just... Something kind, because at that moment, that's what they're going to think about. And maybe they'll walk out, and the next time they get in an elevator, they'll say something kind before they turn their back. And then we have the ripple effect. Yes. So I, I, find I find it very strange elevator behavior that you're turning your back on people when really what you are doing is entering into the space, which means that you can embrace them. I suggest a new kind of elevator behavior that's respectful of people's <laughs> personal space, but also use it as an opportunity to influence how they feel about themselves that day. And what I also like about that is that small things matter. It's not about doing the big things like sell everything you own and give it away. You can start with small things and have an impact. Yeah, always. If you do, you could do a series of small things in, in a day, and it might be much more powerful than giving money away. Yes. Giving money away is something that's easy to track, and, and we all love numbers now. But being a good person out there in the world, it's priceless. I love it. Be somebody, when you look in the mirror, that you really like the person on the other side. Yes. When you think about lead with kindness, is there anything that you would like to mention on top? Start with appreciating your own kindness. It's not someone else's job, it's your job to be kind. And we all have ambivalent feelings, but how we act is what counts. And so take the high road. If you have two sides in you, one that's feeling impatient, and the, that doesn't mean that that's the one that should win when you see someone, remember that their time is valuable. So you lead with kindness by giving them the respect. Love it. Two more questions. What's coming up next for you? 
What's coming up next for me is the process of teaching a new team how to work on the jewelry and we're, mm -hmm. and we're institutionalizing I'm institutionalizing the handover of it over a period of time because I think succession planning is really important. Uh, I'm very excited that we're now on another platform called Covet, which is where young people actually have a closet, an avatar in a closet that they can put our jewelry on them and it doesn't cost anything. We found even it was launched yesterday and the exciting thing is the amount of traffic without even knowing about it that's come to our site. And if they just come to their our site and see that 100% of our profit is donated to the charity of their choice, the landing page, I'm so excited about that. So I'm thrilled that people don't have to spend money to learn about the message behind the line. They can play a game. And it's, a, and it's another platform. And what's so wonderful about that is that life is about collaborating. And so I feel so grateful to Covet for putting us on with, you know, other major designers. So I, I'm just so, ha I'm so happy about that and want to do more things that expand the message of what we do because you can do it your own way. You don't have to buy the jewelry to have an impact. Amazing. And last one, for people who feel very inspired, they can go and check out your jewelry. So it's Joan Hornick Jewelry, Philanthropy is Beautiful, and Pave the Way. How else can people stay in touch with you? People can stay in touch with us through social media. And so they would go to ptwjewelry.com on Instagram. And ptw is easier to, to spell than philanthropy is beautiful or pave the way. So ptw I get it. Pave the <laughs> stands for pave the way, ptwjewelry.com. And that's, that's very helpful, uh, having likes, having comments. And I answer every single email that someone writes to me, if they write to me at the site, if they write to info at the site. I care very much about responding. And so I make, I make a point to do that. I want to hear from people. I want them to tell me their ideas. I want them to ask me for advice. I will always help someone, someone who's new in the jewelry business or the fashion business or is looking to understand how to build a board. Whatever it is, I am there to help them because I have life experience. I feel so inspired now. And I know when I have a question, I might knock on your door again. Oh, you will. I am accessible. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today and talking about leading with kindness. I'm inspired and I hope that everybody now goes to the elevator and saying something nice to a stranger. Yes, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the episode and our conversation about leading with kindness. Since we are talking about kindness, it would be so, so kind if you could leave a rating and a review on the show in Apple Podcasts and in Spotify. And yes, if you have not yet subscribed to it, also please hit that button because your support, it means the world to me. And I also want to support you again next week with more insights on how to reach your goals. On that note, should you ever feel stuck in your career, wonder about your professional purpose or need some specific leadership support, you can always reach out to me at johanna.herbs at delegate.com or via LinkedIn and I'd be happy to support you in your journey with my coaching hat on. With that, we are done for today. We are one step closer to reaching your goals. Talk to you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.